dear friends, colleague, everywhere, whenever you are, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm saying this because I don't know where are you, whoever is watching what I'm talking about. This morning I had a, a conference call or a Zoom meeting with Sydney in Australia. It was 10 o'clock uh, UK time. I think 8 or 9 o'clock evening uh, of Sydney time. That's why I'm so talking to you. I said good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are, wherever you are. Uh, I thank my colleague Ali Shawa for presenting the presentation. And today is the fourth episode of the Fadfada series, which is talking about two problems, or problems of social media platforms, especially with the coverage of what's happening uh, in uh, Middle East uh, last two weeks and uh, the hackers as well. So these two new issues I'm discussing today were not planned by myself, but I have to talk about them. The first issue is the desire of some young people to boycott some of the social media platforms because of their bias stand towards or against the people of Gaza and the coverage of the humanitarian disaster happening there. What I'm trying to say today is not only the social media, my dear young brothers and sisters, or young men and women, it is Arab, European, American, Canadian, newspaper, radio stations, TV station and others. So it's not only the social media platform that you are trying to boycott. So I'm just trying to look comprehensively about the whole issue. This is the first issue of social media platforms. The second issue is the issue of hackers, particularly the young people who hacks, who hack the computer networks and even social media platforms. So both of them became challenge for us as a humanitarian organization or other social organization or individual influencers. But let me take you back before we start to be very emotionally excited and remind all of us what I have been saying and talking and discussing with you for the last years, be three, four, five years. About three team points for you to remember what I have been discussing with you over the time. The, the first one is donors, governments, and the authorities' culture. If you are supported by a government or a donor or any authority, they have certain culture, they have certain policy. And if you want to take their fund, you have to follow their policy. Maybe this is what happened with some of those social media platforms, whether being biased or non-biased. Number two, the continuing the shrinking of civil liberty space, particularly in the south and the east of the globe. It's affecting civil society organization and individuals as well. Number three, remember. The discussion happened with you years ago. The impact of the dependency syndrome that every time we depend on our donation, we do not think outside the box of trying to create fund which is to, to make our operation sustainable and away from the donation, like WAQF or any other investment material uh, of an investment fund. Number four, a lot of governments now are suffering from securitization run by security, militarization run by military forces, sectarianization like by certain sects of the society, familiarization right by some families. 
which all this affecting the atmosphere, the climate atmosphere of the civil liberty space. Number five, the educational sabotage and this, the institutionalization of ignorance. Certain governments intentionally making people ignorant because they don't invest in education. Number six, the lack of investment in social infrastructure like health, like roads, like communication, like water and sanitation, like employment and others. As number seven, the rising of the unemployment rate and the citizens' brain drain and they travel abroad and they leave the country because they don't, they cannot have a conducive atmosphere to allow them to grow in their own countries. Number eight, the rise of Islamophobia. It, got, it started from the 80s, more than 30, nearly 40 years ago and more. And they are linking Islam as religion to the backwardness, to be isolationist religion, to radicalism, extremism, and terrorism. And this only is not done by the non-Muslims. No, God forbid, by Muslims also, especially some of the Muslim leaders who are actually tarnishing, or some of the Muslim governors are tarnishing uh, uh, Islam and Muslims, particularly in the West. They ask for corruption and indebtedness. The debts, the record of debts become a phenomenal record. And this is happening actually, particularly in Muslim majority countries because there's no much democracy there. Number 10, government engagement in medium and long-term agreements with foreign institutions without any consultation or any oversight and lack of uh, or any supervision from government departments, government institution, government representative in the House of Commons, on the parliament, government legislative system, and even civil society organization and institution. Number 11, certain governments making their all young to look like dude or nonsense persons and creating for them neural models who are far away from their community's culture, morality, history, civilization, and religious belief. Just reminding you, this has been discussing many, many, many times for the last few years. Number 12, the rising dubious culture of what? Young people now have a different culture saying they are depending on faith, saying that Allah will shower us with jobs, with gold, with silver, with wealth. The lucky shot. I'm just waiting for my luck. Another say or proverb, particularly in certain Arab countries, if the marble plays with me or the cast hits, I'll be very, very rich. The wishful thinking while waiting and doing nothing. Desperation and dependency on faith. I'm desperate, but I don't do anything. I'm just depending on my faith because Allah will give me risk while I'm sitting doing nothing. Some of the saying is it is, is it I who will fix the universe? Anybody else can fix the universe. Somebody else will say, leave it, it's broken, it's ruined. The country is useless. And the last but not least, this is not our country, it is theirs, and they start to emigrate. Number three, 13, sorry, obliterating the history of people and changing it, disfiguring it, changing their path, discrediting those icons who wrote such history with their souls, blood, and presenting new corrupt and corrupting superstars. This is what's happening. This I've been saying with you to you, please 
listen to what being mentioned and said to you months and years ago, young men and young women. Yes, boycott is, is your legitimate right, but let us talk about our reminders to you as well. My dearest young men and young women, you don't remember all this discussion which I mentioned about it. You know why you don't remember it? You know why, please? I know that actually some of you don't even listen to me now. You know why? Number one, because the lack of your desire to read and comprehend. And if you read a paper like this, it's too long for you to take five minutes to finish it, or 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Just number one. Needless to say, can you comprehend what's been written inside this paper? or document, or research paper. Number two, having less patience. You're not patient to follow up. And you know what culture we're having nowadays? I'm discussing it with younger age group. You know the, the sandwich culture or the fast food culture or the light snack takeaway culture? You don't want to sit down and discuss things seriously. Learning is not about five minutes, two minutes, or 10 seconds. No. The learning process takes months, years, not even hours. And you remember the great scientists and the great scholars, it took them years and years and years to read and travel the world before bringing the new theories and laws to all of us. But this kind becoming less patient to listen and comprehend, this is very, very serious. That's why you cannot remember the 13 points I mentioned in the previous slides. Another point, number three, you, you follow strange and weird and astonishing opinions. Oh, and you, why? Why you go for the weird and familiar opinions? Number four, being very busy discussing what? Conflicting opinions, controversial opinions. I remember a big discussion happened one day on the media about adult breastfeeding. But actually, I don't want to go into detail of this, but this was actually when you are working in an office and you have a female colleague there, it's, it's, uh, and there's no mahram or there's nobody else, some of the strange opinions say that yani, breastfeeding could be there from her before actually to become uh, mahram to you. It's very strange, and it creates a big, big, big media. I know that such individual has been sacked by Al Azhar University a few years back. Many of us are behaving like biological citizens. You know what biological citizen means? Only interesting or interested in eating, drinking, satisfying his uh, sexual desire with his wife. Look, only looking after himself and the well-being of his family, only the closest member of his family, nothing else with the community and society. Lack of knowledge and of the different, we don't, are not interested to know what our neighboring countries are doing, what our advanced countries are doing to learn from them. That's why you are, you are not remembering what I said to you and discussed with you in the first 13 points. Number seven, some of us, are not convinced by the voluntary sector or doing any voluntary activities with any organization. Number eight, being very busy earning your life, your living, that's this, this halal, it's not haram. And do, do not care about what's happening in the surrounding. Even some of us is willing to die in a sinking boat in the middle of the ocean, middle of the sea to go and look for another job somewhere else. Even some of us is willing to go and get less paid job 
in a foreign country. People think when they travel to Europe or America, they'll be the, the land of honey and milk. They don't know that these countries take about 40 to 50 percent uh, uh, tax of your income. The other 50 percent might not be sufficient to give you a decent life and to give some money back to the family of yours that you wanted to support. Number nine, you're not investing much in protecting your cyberspace. That's why the hackers come and hack your uh, computer or your social media uh, page. This is why you are not remembering what I discussed with you years ago. Let us talk about the first issue, the hackers. Who are they? Could be an individual who is a pioneer in untying the passwords of these uh, computer systems. Could be a group of young people. Could be professional specialized companies. Could be security and intelligence agencies. Could be criminal groups. Could be anybody. I'm not interested who are they. And why I'm discussing these hackers with you today, I discussed it a few days ago in Arabic with other audience. Why? There are two issues or two experiences. One of them is personal on, on myself. The second one is organizational. A personal experience uh, on the 16th of May, I found my big page, which is Dr. Han, Dr. Dot Hanil Banna, being hacked by somebody. I submitted a complaint to Facebook authority. Up to now, on 28th of May, I could not be able to resume its activity again. Number two, I posted a post which includes a Majesty the Queen uh, image honoring me or awarding me. And it was in less than 36 hours, I had more than 1,200 people added as followers to my other page, which is Hanil Banna page, which is very strange for me. Number three, while I was delivering my talk last Friday, which is 20, 21st of May, three or four people came on the Zoom, shouting, whistling, and making noises to disturb and disrupt the talk. That's why I'm talking about my personal experience over the last two weeks during even the time of the what's happening in the Gaza conflict at that time. And this is the people who hacked my page. I don't know who are they. They are advertising for certain telephone, mobile phone, materials, and others. I don't know who are they. This actually, their name is P-H-U-K-I-E-N, online too. I don't know who are they. And even with some of my talks I delivered before, and they actually putting their name on top of the name of my page as well. But up to now, after reporting it to the uh, to the Facebook authority, I have not received any uh, confirmation how to resume my page again. On the organization level, I have an experience which happened to another organization two years ago. Other hacker or hackers, or a group of people, or whatever you call them, hacked this organization computer system. And it was a standstill for at least three months. Could not be able to communicate to their staff, to send messages, to transfer money, and it was in a state of complete paralysis. Lucky they were, because they had another backup copy in a, in a different uh, file in a different uh, safe, not fired. So they managed to resume the, 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 the computer network after three months. Now I'm going to take you with me to introduce to you some of the most famous young hackers. One of them is Kevin Mitnick. You know, he was a teen. A teen means 14, 15, 13, 16, when he started. And was charged with stealing computer manuals from Pacific Bell. 
young age, about 13, 14, 15, 16. Adrian Lamo, he was 20 years old. And he used an unprotected content management tool at Yahoo. Yahoo, you know Yahoo? To modify Reuters article and add a fake quote attributed to the former Attorney General John Ashcroft of the United States of America. Lamu was called the homeless hacker. Somebody at the age of 15, somebody at the age of 20. Alberto Gonzalez, his code name or nickname was called Sub Nazi. Sub Nazi. He eventually became active on criminal commerce site shadowcrew.com and was considered one of its best hackers and moderators. In 2005, he hacked into TGX sales and he stole in about $256 million. Matthew Bevan and Richard Price, team of British hackers who hacked into multiple military networks in 1996, including Griffith Air Base, Air Force Base, the Defense Information System Agency, and the Korean Atomic Research Institute, CARI. So these young people managed to do all of this. Jenison James and Sheeta, curious about using of POTS software based robots that can infect, 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 and ultimately control computer systems. He was able to compromise more than 400,000 computers and he was charged with 57 months in prison in 2005. Michael Clegg, he was 15 in 2000, and he was known as the Mafia Boy. 15, teenager, under 20, three people, at least four people. He used the combined resources, the Mafia Boy, to disrupt the number one search engine at the time, Yahoo, again. Within one week, it also brought down who? Dell, eBay, CNN, and Amazon. And this led the authorities in America and others to, to create laws to fight cyber crime and everybody is thanking the mafia boy for letting him to let the governments to produce or to initiate or to create this uh, cyber crime the law against uh, to fight cyber crime kevin paulson in 1983 was 17 again he was using alias dark dante he hacked into Arpanet, the Pentagon computer system network. In 1990, he hacked a radio station contest and ensured that he was the 102nd caller and he won brand new Porsche. I don't know how much is the Porsche now, maybe three, four hundred thousand dollar vacation and $20,000 at the same time. Number eight of the famous hackers, somebody called Jonathan James. He was also using alias Comrade. Jonathan hacked several companies, according to the New York Times. What really earned James' attention was his hack into what? The computers of nurses Department of Defense. Even more impressive was the fact that James was 15 at that time. 15, 10, 16, 17, 20. 
and they hacked had an access is hacking have allowed them to have an access to more than 3000 messages from government employees users name passwords and other sensitive data these are the young people who are very famous hackers do you know young men and women how much was the average age of those hackers eight of them there were eight in total and six of them were under the age of 20 and their average age was 16.16 and 16 and uh, maybe two three months teenagers managed to do this incredible work could be legal or illegal is beside the point let me take you again young men and women you're trying to boycott yes i have no problem with this to the saying of three prominent scholars scientists and philosopher scholar scientist and philosopher the scientist his name was jean jack crosso jean jack crosso <clears throat> who was a Swiss botany scientist and philosopher at the same time. You know what he said? In the 18th century, he was born 1712 and died 1778. What he said, agricultural farming is the only method to make people independent. People independent. People independent. If you have the world's wealth, but you cannot produce or have your food, you will be under the mercy of others. Remember that trading can make you wealthy, but agriculture, agricultural farming earn you your freedom. This was Jean Jacques Rousseau, who died 1778 in the 18th century, Swiss scientist. Sheikh Mohammed Mutali Sharawi from Egypt, very, very well known Sufi Sheikh. What he said in the 20th century, he was born in 1911, died 1998, age of nine, uh, 87 years old. What he said, who eat from his axe, his decision is from his head. Who eat from his axe, from his hand, his decision or her decision from his head. The last and not least is philosopher and poet and artist Gibran Khalil Gibran, a Lebanese, who was born in 1883, end of 19th century, and died 1931. What he said, wow, wow, to a nation. Ooh, and he was actually and crying for such a nation. Woo to a nation where what it does not weave, eat what it does not grow, and drink what it does not squeeze and produce. This Gubran, Khalil Gubran, who died in 1931. Young men, these are the images of the three great scholars and scientists from 18th century. To 20 centuries. Jean Jacques Rousseau, Sheikh Tashaarawi, and Gibran Khalil Gibran. Let us look at our Arabic and Islamic world and ask yourself and myself these questions. Want to break out? Yes, I'm with you, but let me listen to this. Are we, young men and women, eating from what we cultivate, drinking from what we squeeze? Wearing from what we weave, building from what we manufacture, residing in where it is safe for us. But if so, if we are doing all this, okay, we'll be able to, we'll be able to, we'll be able to produce our medicine, educate our children, creating the syllabus, home made syllabus, protecting future generations establishing renaissance and building civilization, which is not happening, unfortunately. It's not happening, unfortunately. Dearest conscious young people, let's agree on boycotting. 
but with a condition, creating alternative solution, creating alternative solution, creating, al there might be some, 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 some appetite now for the cutting, but maybe it might not be there in a year or two. And let us discuss two issues. The issue of the negative, one of them is negative, the other one is positive. The negative one, as I mentioned before, talking about the source of our food, medicine, clothes, <coughs> fashion, <coughs> hairstyle, even our hairstyle is not homemade. Hot and cold drinks, cafeteria and cafe, takeaway fast food chains, huge food stores as well as others. Are they, are they, are they, where are they coming from? Want to boycott? Yes, what is the alternative solution besides boycotting? Look at here, some of these fashions. It's very strange to the culture of your country, the culture of your religion, the culture of your history, and the culture of your value. Same again. The fashion, as you can see it, where it's coming from. Who is designing such a fashion for you? Who is designing such a fashion for you? Even the food. Look at these great countries. The one on the left, which is Iraq. North to it is Turkey, and, uh, and east to it is, uh, is Iran. South, uh, west is uh, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and and Syria, okay? And the other map is Egypt in the north, Sudan in the middle, South Sudan in the south, and Uganda at the bottom, okay? Three great rivers from heaven, Tigray, Euphrates, and the Nile, in four or five countries. But they are importing most of their food materials. My astonishment when I visited Iraq a few years ago, I was eating something which come from Emirate. Emirate is not an agricultural country. Coming from Jordan, same. Coming from Saudi Arabia, same. And you have two rivers, same for Egypt. 70 to 80 percent of the food is being imported from abroad due to be self-sufficient in the 50 to the beginning of the 60s but now what's happening in sudan we, we used to say sudan is the basket for the africa for the food for africa or the middle east or the arab world now it has a problem of producing it is own bread who oh, sources of our food food source resources this on the negative side on the positive side is the hackers and the social media young men i say we have the magnificent 11 young people who created the social media platform from 2004 up till now also we have those a young eight or seven or nine or ten hackers who managed uh, brilliantly to go uh, to infiltrate the computer system, pioneering system. And let me take you through the number of the names of people who created these social media platforms. Mark uh, Zuckerberg, it is, he was a university student. 17, 18, 19. Kevin Sistrom, Instagram. Mike uh, Krager, uh, Krager, uh, Krager uh, Instagram. And Twitter, Jack Dorsey, Biz Stone, Noah Glass, Evan Williams, or Twitter. Uh, YouTube, uh, Javid, uh, Javid Karim, Steve Chen, uh, Chan Hurley, and TikTok, Chang Yem. Eng, Chang Gaming. Those people are, I call them the, the, the magnificent 11. The average age of those 11 is 26 years old. 
The youngest is 20 years old. The eldest one or the oldest one is 20, 37 years old. And if we talk uh, averagely, they might have been started for the average age between 23 to 25. Their companies uh, managed to income. The income was about $138 uh, billion. They started as individuals. Now, maybe some companies took over or bought these companies and started to change its policy, its procedures, its political stand. But when they started, all of them, they started as personal initiatives. And if we take the hackers on one side, and the social media uh, pioneer on the other side, we find actually the average age is between 16 for the hackers and 26 for the social media platform creator. My emergency appeal to you, young men and young women. You might realize what I was talking about one day, long time ago. And when you do realize, let me know and I'll be with you to start again. Let us be enthusiastic. It's another question, young, 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 young people. To this product, which was created by 11 people. Okay. Let us be enthusiastic, young people, to this product, which was produced by the young, magnificent 11. Let us be able to produce alternative and more impartial and neutral platforms. The scarecrow or the nagging dread of selfhood is a part of the solution and not the solution by itself. The issue of Palestinian humanitarian suffering proved for many of us the lack of neutrality and the impartiality, especially from the media, with the Arab media, or even some of the Muslim media, or others. Lack of neutrality and impartiality and the solution is to create alternative social media platforms. You might have the right to ask me a question, which I put, I put it myself. Your question is, aren't you the one asking me who said to us before that the shrinking uh, of civil, uh, the continuous or the continuous shrinking of civil liberty space in many countries led to the burial of what? Of creativity, innovation, pioneering, discoveries, establish renaissance, and building civilization. That's what I said. Yes, I said that, and I believe in that. No, no doubt. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Yes, I said that. But you have to realize, young men and young women, that there are tens of millions of your countrymen are living in more affluent countries in the West as a diaspora. And they can help you. Countries that have much wider civil liberty spaces, countries that have more educational and technological knowledge and advancement, countries having independent human rights organization to protect you and anybody else, countries having independent institution protecting the intellectual properties of individuals and the organizations. So you can put hand in hand with those people in these countries and build what you can to become the alternative solution of the suffering of humanity. And instead of relying on one source, you can have multiple sources to create for you uh, impartiality and neutrality. My message to you, young men and young women, my message to you, first of all, I value the enthusiastic spirit you have. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I value your God-given dynamic energy. No doubt about it. I value your sweeping reaction reflecting your ability of making the necessary needed social change. 
No doubt about it. I value the sweeping reaction, your sweeping reaction, reflecting your ability of making the necessary needed social change. No doubt about it. I value also the soft, pure belief embedded in the depth of your hearts. No doubt about it. The comprehensive vision of yours that will make you fulfill your dreams and achieving your realistic objects. I value all this in you. Because I believe that you have all this and more. I believe that you have all this and more. I believe that you have all this and more. But the issue of construction, reconstruction, building, and others is not going to be done by scarecrow or nagging greed of the selfhood only. No. It's not by, by making the cry only. No. It is that and others. Like what? You have to stand firm. You have to have the first step forward. You have to have a march, path. You have to have a vision. You have to create a roadmap. You have to communicate. Your work has to be complemented with other work of work of somebody else. Building partnership. You have to build partnership with others. You have to create coalition. You have to create social empowerment. You have to build the capacity of people. You have to explore the energies of others. You have to discover the new leadership, protecting freedom, preserving rights, establishing social justice and the equality, having sustainable peace and security, implementing programs. You have a program to implement. You have uh, another program to sustain your peace and security. You have to have a program to achieve your objectives. You have to have a methodology of to review your plans and achievement. It's not something one way go, or, 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 my way or that way. No. You have to reposition yourself, adjust to your path. You have to learn from your mistake and failure. You have to go to all this beside the scarecrow or the nagging dread. As mentioned to you before, young people, in my, uh, uh, those hackers and social media platform creators were as young as you are, and even younger, from the age of 15 to the age of 37. Where are we as young people from the educational and technological sectors? who are the guarantors of creative, pioneering, innovative discoveries. Where are we from that? Where are we, young people, from what? The tireless work that we have to do, the all forever patience, all and forever patience. It's not just one month. It's not just one demonstration. It's not just one statement not just one article, it's not just one stand. The all forever patience. Where are we from Jenja Crosso, Sheikh Matwali Sharawi, and Gibran, Khalil Gibran? Statements, which is summarized in, in one sentence, building the national and stable economy, earning this nation their freedom should be based on the agriculture farming producing the nation's food. Look at the oil producing countries are vulnerable because they don't produce food. They're very wealthy country, but vulnerable. As Jean Jacques Rousseau said, everything is coming from abroad. They have the money to buy anything, but they cannot cultivate the food. Let us realize young people that boycotting is a part of the solution and not all the solution. The solution is in creating the alternative solution and not only in organizing demonstration, crowd mobilization, but will be in raising the social awareness, leading to finding alternative solutions. We have seen together, young people, who is producing our food. 
weaving our clothes, making our medicine, creating our children educational syllabus, developing our technology, telling us how to talk with our friends, how to build our matrimonial relationship with our wives, how to bring up our children, how even to comb our hair, or how to walk, and what kind of music we should use to for our poetry. Unfortunately, that's there. I've seen it. Young people, young men and women, are we ready to go through this experience and face these challenges? What challenges are they? First challenge, over offering sacrifices. Second challenge is waving of acquisitions and the accessories. Third the challenge, believing in society and building altruism to protect society's assets and the resources. Priority is not for me and my family only, but for my society and me and my family as well. Are we ready to do this? To offer these sacrifices? Are you ready, young people, to fight corruption? Another challenge. To live on little food and having less resources? To share with other members of our country or diaspora communities who live abroad the responsibility of governing our own countries? Will we trust those people abroad who are like us? But they, instead of living in our country, they are living in maybe Middle East, Africa, Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand. Are we? going to trust them, to bring them to, to be a part of our governing uh, system? Are we young people ready to understand the dimensions of the future stages of your life and live inside such dimensions to achieve the goals of the vision that you wish Allah would fulfill their objectives by your Efforts. Are we ready to do that? To be patient and go for these years of hardship? Are you ready, young people, to protect acquisition, support social revolutions, achieve the roadmap goals, renew renaissance, energize energies, and build people's capacity for our country and for our community and for our society? Are we Willing to do that? These are the challenges. Building social media platform is a part of our process of community building and not the whole process. We have to define the dimensions of our vision and make it the guarantor of future path and of your societies. The biased impact created by social media platforms, newspaper, TV channel, radio station, and the hackers during the conflict in Gaza was tragic, unfortunately. And everybody knew that. It proved that the rights holders are the only legitimate people who can defend such right. We all have to stand up together for what? for the issue of defending the rights and the freedom of people and the other creations of God. We all have to stand up together for the issue of defending the rights and the freedom of people and the other creations of God. Let us not wait till, this is what we have seen in the past, unfortunately, the nations die, others steal the resources, the fragmentation of the societies, 
scourge of sacred places before responding to the needs of the needy people? No, shouldn't wait. We have to, to we, have, we have seen how did we respond to many complicated humanitarian disasters when people face torture, ethnic cleansing, and mass killing. Then how we forgot about them when the media stopped highlighting their issues. I've gone through this. Such issues of Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Ugor up to now, Rohingya up to now, Kashmir up to now, Central African Republic up to now, Somalia up to now, South Sudan up to now, Democratic Republic of Congo, Eritrean refugees in Sudan, Yemen, uh, Djibouti, as well as others, become forgotten crises. Forgotten crisis, forgotten crisis. And of course, the issue of Palestine, the issue of Gaza, and the issue of others. The issue of Yemen, which become protracted uh, problem. The issue of Syria, issue and others, others, others. The issue of desertification, climate change, and other issues as well. Young men and women, this is prowling universe with its ex existential spheres, planets, galaxies, skies, stars, moons, suns, was not created by the creator just to be enjoyed by one category of people without the other. It's not for the white only, it's not for the black only, it's not for the brown only, it's not for the African only, it's not for the European or the American or the Australian or the Arabs or non-Arabs only. No, it's not, it's not only for one race without the other. For one religion without the other, for one culture without the other, but it was created for all of us, for all of us and for all of us. Can you young people, and will be with you, fulfill this dream? Can you and will be with us, will be with you? If you are resolved, we are resolved with you. Let us be firm and bring happiness and joy to humanity and every living creations on earth. God made this sprawling universe an inheritance for whom? Not for one country, not for one race, not for one culture, not for one religion, not for one history, but for all of us. Inshallah. God bless you. Thank you very much for being with me for this nearly uh, 50 minutes. And I hope that actually uh, I have explained my vision to you on this talk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.